Hi everyone, welcome back to the SG Risk Watcher channel. Today, uh, I'm back with what I think is probably going to be a pretty controversial opinion and that is that the Longines Spirit 37mm is a better watch than the IWC Mark 18. And that is a pretty controversial opinion because when you think of pilot's watches, I think the IWC Mark series and the Big Pilot series are the first watches that come to mind. They are the watches that define the pilot's category and are the benchmark that all other pilot's watches are compared against. So why do I make this bold claim? I'm gonna present some facts to you and I'll let you decide for yourself. So let's start off with the water resistance. The water resistance on the IWC Mark 18 in particular is 60mm which is sufficient for daily life and because you don't expect to bring uh, a pilot's watch into the water. Meanwhile for the long jeans it's 100 meters of water resistance which is the benchmark set by Rolex for the Oyster Perpetual and Explorer series which means this watch can be a, a lot more of an everyday watch, a watch that you can bring into the water if you want to go for a swim with as long as you don't do hardcore diving. Next I'm going to talk about the case. If you look at all these um, IWC watches. They actually the edge of the case is pretty flat. It only has a small chamfer. Whereas for the long jeans, you actually have this really white bevel uh, on the edge, which is polished, and to me it gives definitely a lot more of a, a premium product feel. And you can argue that the a pilot's watch is a tool watch, and I would agree. But the truth is that most of these watches are going to be used in everyday life and uh, more than in the skies and having this uh, extra touch to me it feels more premium and more special or more yeah okay next uh, let's talk about the dial so the dial on the iwc mark 18 is actually um, Printed, so it's it's flat, it's matte, and then you get the numerals. You print a layer of loom on them, so it's pretty two dimensional and pretty straightforward cockpit like two light. On the Longines, you can see it's actually pretty different. Firstly, you get a blue sun ray down, uh, and then you get a applied Longines uh, logo. And let's take a look at the numerals. So the numerals are applied. That means they are a block of loom and surrounded by metal on the edges. So there's a three-dimensional look and feel to them compared to a simple printed uh, numerals on the IWC. And if you move towards the edge of the, the dial, you can firstly see this ring of silver followed by the minutes track on the edge and if you look carefully you notice that um, there it, the main dial itself is actually one step lower than the minutes track and the the silver ring is a is a step in between so so that gives it some level of depth to the dial and that, that gives it a feeling of a more premium product. Uh, uh, you're getting more on your dial and it feels more refined, uh, more complex compared to the IWC. On the second hand, you can see it has a, the tips are painted red, which gives it a pop color and adds some interest to the dial. Next, um, talking about loom, I think something that is not widely known and for me is a major complaint is the, the loom of the IWC. So the IWC is only loomed on the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the seas. So when it's at night, all you see are these three, these four points. The numerals themselves, although they look like they are loom, they are actually not. If you don't believe me, you can go and Google it yourself and you notice that uh, for this price, is to me, is 
definitely a deal breaker not to have a fully loomed down when a hundred dollar china made uh, pilot clone can have a fully loomed down and since IWC is taking the more toolish aspect, you expect that you can see uh, full loom on the whole watch. Meanwhile, of course, the long jeans, every single numeral is loomed. And to me, that is a, a minimum of what is expected. Yeah. If you look at the second hand, even on the second hand, uh, for on the long jeans, it's actually a teardrop shape, whereas on the IWC, it's uh, flat. So that, that shows a level of detail and refinement on the long jeans that I feel that the IWC isn't providing. So if you look at the 6 o'clock uh, for these long jeans, you can see that the date sits symmetrically uh, at the six o'clock position and is in line with the rest of the numerals. So it's not a directly fair comparison because uh, this is a 37 millimeter long jeans and the 40 millimeter long jeans has the same problem as the IWC which you will see here, which is where the three o'clock date window, it sits much further in compared to the rest of the numerals. And that shows that the, the movement inside wasn't designed for this watch. So, when you're paying so much for for a premium product, I don't think it's uh, acceptable that uh, you get this design element that sits so so differently from the rest of the watch. But okay, because uh, both the long jeans and the IWC face this problem, uh, I I don't compare it, but it's uh, it's something to take note of. Next, let's talk about the movement. So the IWC uses a Salida SW300, which is the equivalent of the ETA2892, which is a base movement that can be found on a lot of watches, even from the entry level. Longines, meanwhile, uses the LA8.4 movement. Similar to the IWC, it's based on the ETA2892, but it comes with some significant upgrades. So the IWC has 42, power, 42 hours of power reserve, while the Longines has 72 hours of power reserve, and it beats at a slightly lower beat rate, 3.5 Hz, compared to the 4 Hz beat rate of the IWC. Next, a major premium of the Longines compared to the IWC is that the Longines is, is um, chronometer certified by an independent body known as the COSC. So that means it's tested to minus four plus six seconds a day, tested in five positions and three temperatures over 15 days. And the IWC is not chronometer certified, which is a shame at the price that you are paying. What about magnetic resistance? IWC is famous for having a iron cage around a lot around the dial, around the movement of the watch to protect it from magnetism. Well, instead of the old-fashioned iron cover, Longines, being part of the Swatch Group, gets an upgrade with a silicon balance spring that makes it highly magnetic resistance while giving accuracy, better accuracy regardless of temperature and position. If you look at the bracelet of the Longines, there's actually a refinement here where you get quick release just by pressing this tab. Yeah, and for this price range, I think that is pretty amazing and more watches should have this. I believe the new, newer IWCs have it as well, but it's nice to have it at this price range. Now let's talk about Heritage. IWC is one of the most famous pilots watch, but I would say that Longines has an equally strong pilot's heritage. So first of all, IWC is from started in 1868, but Longines is even older. It started in 1832. Both brands, both Longines, IWC, and even Omega and others made pilot swatches during World War II, so they have a strong pilot's heritage. But Longines' heritage goes even further back than that. One of the firm, famous early female aviators, Amelia Earhart, wore Longines while trying to go around, fly around 
the whole world. Charles Lindbergh, the famous pilot who made the transatlantic Atlantic flight from uh, US to Europe, he wore uh, long jeans and he collaborated with long jeans to make the hour angle watch, which was one of the first, uh, one of the early pilot's watches that was used for international travel. So Longines also invented the first flyback chronograph, the first two pusher chronograph, and it's safe to say that Longines has one of the strongest heritage in the in the Swiss watch industry. And I feel that it is a bit it, Longines is quite an overlooked brand in terms of its heritage. And I wish that it would it would um better share its heritage to so that it can be um appreciated by more people. Next, let's talk about the price point and that's where the key difference is. So Longines retails for a Singapore dollars price of $3,670 versus $6,800 for the IWC Mark 18, which is now discontinued. And that is nearly a two times price difference. So to me, the the price isn't justified because I feel that I'm getting a better product, a better pilot's watch from the long jeans versus the IWC. Okay, so now, now that we reach the end, um, there's something important to share, which is that the arrival of the replacement of the IWC Mark 18, which is the IWC Mark 20. So the IWC Mark 20 um, addresses many of the problems that I find on the IWC Mark 18. First of all, it has uh, 100 meters of water resistance, so now on par with the Longines. It has a new in-house movement, which upgrades it from the base uh, movement that it used to have. And the new in-house movement gives it 120 hours of power, res power reserve, which is what I feel is required when you're paying a premium price for a premium brand. A base movement just isn't acceptable. Next, um, they've changed the dial a little bit so that the three o'clock date window, uh, the offset is less obvious. Yeah, so the dial is more balanced. I think they moved the numerals inward a bit. They moved the markers a little bit so that the dial is more balanced. But all these come at a price. The new price for retail price for the IWC Mark 20 is $8,200, which is a $1,400 price increase from the Mark 18. And that brings it to quite a, a lot more than the long jeans. And one problem that hasn't been solved in the IWC Mark 20 is the loom on the dial. It's still only loom at 12, 3, 6, and 9, which I think is really a joke for this price. I think what IWC is trying to save is they're trying to save the fully loomed dial for the IWC Big Pilot. But seriously, it's a joke that uh, paying $8,000 for the most famous pilot's watch that doesn't have a fully loomed dial, that just isn't acceptable. So I uh, hope you learned something today and um, let me know your thoughts. Are you convinced that the Longines is a better watch than the IWC? I'm sure there will be a lot of pushback from this and I'm waiting to hear from you. I hope uh, there will be respectful comments and give me facts and tell me where I've gone wrong or do you agree with me. And if you like this content, uh, please like and subscribe and follow my Instagram on at SGU Wristwatcher. I love to hear your opinions on this topic. Thank you.